the Lord look at. He says, do you love me more than this? At the level of filio. He says what? Feed my lambs. So the lambs are the younger ones. But he says, feed them. This is the youth ministry also. Am I right? You know, when Jesus threw the talit over Jairus' daughter, I believe this is happening all over the world. I believe he's throwing his righteousness over this young generation. The generation that they say is hopeless, is, is hard, is beyond, because you know what? They have access to uh, stuff that we never had access to. They are exposed to sin at an earlier age and all that. Uh, in other words, they are saying, it's a dead generation. Jesus would throw his talit, amen, his robe of righteousness over this dead generation. And they will arise again, amen? Amen? And all over, I'm seeing him raising this generation. And what they need at this time is feeding. Feed my lambs. And then he asks again, this is a restoration to ministry. He asks, Peter, do you agape me? Again, he asks, do you love me the self-sacrificial love? So second time he asks, Lord, you know that I feel you, you. Now he has learned the lesson. It's not his love. It is the Lord's love for him. And the level of that, he says, shepherd my sheep. Now, it's a different word. Yes. It's not feed, it's shepherd. But notice, feed my lamb comes first. Then, shepherd my sheep. Shepherd my sheep is tending to them. You know, shepherd, shepherd tends, which means you shepherd, have an oversight. Literally, the word is having an oversight. You see what they need. In the spirit, you see what, and again, it's come back to food again, because the, the mainstay for the flock is food. Amen. But once more, shepherd must step back and see where is the flock going to. Is there water there? Is the water too rough, too wild, for their comfort that they, they want to drink? Amen. He has the oversight, so that's a shepherd. The word episcop, overseer. And Peter says, feed the flock of God. Later on he wrote in his epistle, feed the flock of God, whom God has appointed you. And overseers, whom God has appointed you, episcope, having a scope over the people. Literally the word scope, our English word come from there. Overseer, oversee. Amen? Not for filthy lucre, not for money. Don't do it for money. So you see, rich or poor, it's the same. I'll tell you something, okay? And my leaders are here. I'll tell you. I, I, I used, to, used to, and still, I don't spend that much time with people who are rich in our church. I don't have special meetings with them. And you know what? They don't mind. Our people are so well taught now, they don't mind. Amen. It's just me. You know who I spend time with? Pastor Mark. <laughs> Pastor Lawrence, Pastor Daniel, Pastor Gideon, and what's your name, bro? <laughs> and James Dean here. Yeah. And you know what? I, I enjoy being with them. It's just that you know, I, I used to have a bad attitude. I don't even want to go out with them at all. And then the Lord corrected me, and the Lord says, Do you know that I invited myself to a rich man's house? I said, You did, Lord? He says, Zacchaeus' house. Many a times you must see them as people with needs as well. It can be pride not to, to go with. But something else, when a pastor spends too much time with only the movers and the shakers, you know, in, in, in business and, and people who are uh, celebrities or whatever it is, you know, I, I think uh, we got to be careful that we don't go. People are watching. Your flock is not stupid. Not for filthy lucre. Not for, not, not by constraint. You know what that means? Not because, oh, I have to, like, I'm a pastor. What? Right? A story of a woman who woke up her husband to go to church. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's time to go. I don't want to go. You know, you got to go. Where do you want to go? It's a great church. The wife said, I, they, don't, they don't like me. Who told you they don't like you? I know. They don't listen to me. You got to give a good reason why I must go. You are the pastor. <laughs> so it can happen, right? There are times you don't feel like going, you know, and uh, you feel constrained. You know, I was, oh, I, I gotta do it because 
you know, after all, I'm drawing your salary, I'm a pastor, I'm expected to... It's very sad if your life comes to that, that place that you have to... By, don't do it by constraint, Peter said. So he said, feed the flock willingly, for then you will have a reward. You have a reward. Then finally he said, Peter, do you, now you know what he did? The last question, do you feel you me? He came down to his level and he says, Lord, <laughs> you know all things. You know all things. You know that I only like you. And the Lord looked, smiled at him and said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. What an honor. What an honor. The mouth that denied knowing him is the same mouth that stood a few days after. Amen? 50 days after. On the day of Pentecost and preach, 3,000 people were saved. And you know what he preached, you know? You know what he preached? Look at what he preached on the day of Pentecost. He told the Jewish people, you denied the Holy One. <laughs> You denied the Holy One and the just. He was so righteousness conscious. He was so full of the revelation of grace that he can point his finger to them and you denied the Holy One. <laughs> so we got to be so, you know, full of grace that our past doesn't affect us anymore. It's not what you were. It's what His grace has made you to be. Can I have a good amen?